This is a video tutorial on doing a driver swap of a broken headphone, which this one happens to be a SRH940 Sure into a O'Neill Stretch headphone. They use the same size drivers, and this one's pretty comfortable. The ear cup is a little different size, so the sound will change a little bit. If it changes for the worse, well, this is a waste of time. The tools that you will need all right, soldering iron, a cheap one will work. A little bit of solder, you won't even need all this. A Phillips screwdriver. A utility knife. And that's about it. I want to talk about this headphone for a little bit. I knew it was going to break beforehand, so I bought it used, and that's completely fine with me. I did quite a bit of research to find a a durable headphone and this one well, it was not bad it was about 50 bucks or 40 bucks I think and uh, I threw it down the stairs and it survived so what we're gonna do is go ahead and take the ear pads off and go ahead and unscrew the cover cut around the driver and after you got the outer layer off you're going to cut the I guess the edge of it of each side and then what we're going to do is we're going to flex it. This will loosen up the, the glue towards the bottom of the enclosure. And I could probably do it right now actually. And it'll be easier to pop out. Once you take it out it'll look something like this. You gotta be really careful not to touch the diaphragm. If you get some kinks in it then it's gonna take a while to get out by blowing into it. And go ahead and do the other side. Also, you gotta remember what side is which, so you could use a marker or something to write on the back. Okay, well, here are both drivers. I noticed I freaking chipped this section of it. I hope that'll be okay. Do the same thing for the O'Neill headphones. And this one has a fabric cover on it, which unfortunately I will have to replace with some other kind of material and this one is pretty basic just four screws okay once you have it out it looks like this and what basically we're going to do the same thing cut around the driver this time more carefully because we're trying to take care of this case we're going to go ahead and cut the wires off though. Once so you have the other driver out, it looks like that. Now you can save this for another another project because it actually does still sound pretty good so you could probably use it for something else. Original drivers out, I go ahead and just take the sure drivers and just pop them in there. I don't even glue them because I think I might change it in the future if I wanted to swap them out. But since the glue is still around there, they kind of just jams itself in there, it won't wobble or anything, but you can tape it if you want to. I went ahead and used some electrical tape. This is still reversible if I decide to change it. Okay, now that we have both drivers back into the new headset casing, we're going to go ahead and solder them back on to the wires that they came from. Just wait, wait for your soldering iron to get a little hot and just tug and off it goes the tricky part now is soldering this cable back onto here and since it's kind of short you gotta find a perfect angle to hold on to the cable and the soldering iron at the same time okay now the cable is connected it's not the best soldering job but hey it's connected for now you can screw it back in just to get it out of the way to make it easier to work on the opposite side. Now since this cable is so short, I don't have to do some crazy, crazy thing going on here. Let's try to get this cable connected. Now I have the wires connected. And before I put everything back together, I just test it out just to make sure I got the wiring correct. Now since I got everything put back together, I'll be listen listening to these to hear any differences in the sound, which there will be because I'm moving to a smaller air cup and typically the sound stage will be more compact 
And since this headphone has bass ports already built in compared to the original body, the bass might change slightly 